I got a question here from Garrett Olson, who says, do you think remote ID broadcast can be programmed into a flight controller that has Bluetooth like SpeedyB? Um, Garrett Olson, uh, let me let me make that question a little more generic. Like, I don't know if the Bluetooth module on the SpeedyB flight controller can do the type of broadcast that's needed for remote ID. There are people who say Bluetooth, uh, the range of a Bluetooth signal is only 50 feet. This remote ID thing is dead, you know, dead in the water. And they don't realize that there are different types of Bluetooth technology. And there are some types of Bluetooth that are intended to be a unidirectional low speed broadcast. And they can have hundreds of, of feet of range or more. I don't know the actual maximum, but um, just because something is Bluetooth doesn't mean it's the same Bluetooth that's used to like, think about Bluetooth, like your Bluetooth headphones. They're doing an audio connection. It is relatively short range. It is relatively high bandwidth, okay? And their goal is to have low power, high bandwidth. So the range is low. If, you're, if your goal is to have low bandwidth, you can have longer range. And there are versions of Bluetooth that do that. I don't know whether the chip that's in the SpeedyB can specifically do that. The other thing is that the SpeedyB flight controller Bluetooth interface is a serial interface. So you've got this chip that takes a serial data stream in and retransmits it over Bluetooth and does what it's going to do. Um, so I don't know if you could then sort of reprogram the chip to do, you would need, I don't know how, if you could do that with the literal SpeedyB F405. But the broader question is, in theory, could you have a flight controller with remote ID built in? And the technical answer to that question is sure. Technically speaking, there is no reason why you couldn't take the hardware and firmware that makes a remote ID broadcast device do whatever it needs to do and put that on a flight controller. You could put a video transmitter on the same board as a flight controller. You could put an ESC in a flight controller on the same board. You could do whatever you want, right? But the question then becomes, would that be deemed to be compliant with the regulations by the FAA? And that is a much trickier question that I don't think we have a definitive answer to. Um, the FAA's requirements for remote ID module, it, modules includes some kind of tamper resistance. And it is yet to be determined how much tamper resistance is enough tamper resistance for them to be satisfied. Some people have said that that tamper resistance means that there's no way that you could run open source code at all since the code could just be reprogrammed and reflashed and that would be tampering. Other people have said, nah, it's much, we, we anticipate it'll be much less strict than that. The answer is we, we don't really know. Uh, and we won't know until someone tries it. So Also, just to be yeah, clear, Blitzer. everything is rubber stamped and will be accepted if you submit it and fill out the paperwork, whether it will be deemed not appropriate in six months or something like that is another story. But right. they are rubber stamping modules, not reviewing anything electronically. It just has to be FCC certified, and it has to be uh, approved through the ASTM guidelines. There's like a checklist you fill out. Right. But you just you just take your remote ID module, you say, okay, yep, check, 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 check. I, I did all those things. And then they give you a de document, a uh, declaration of compliant conformity, DOC. Yeah. And then maybe later, six months from now or a year from now, they come back and they say, whoa, whoa wait a minute. And they try and they, you know, so we just don't know. Yeah. And then um, there's a question. Real quick, I have yeah. to say there's also like you're probably lying on a federal document at that point. And then, you know, there's a lot of pieces to that puzzle. Like we're, we're wondering, are the Chinese modules going to attempt to register even if they're not compliant? Can they get by and slide by saying in our test we got this range? Sorry, you didn't. You know, all these yeah. kind of questions are really, like you said, up in the air and we don't really know yet. Yeah.